Hey guys, today we're going to be unlocking the secrets of having perfect left hand technique. So let's get into it. Go grab your bass and let's start playing. Hey, my name is Clayton Hiku of Clay's Bass Lessons, where each week I help you guys master the bass, find your groove, and put a little music in your life. Now, to my longtime subscribers, I know this part three video has been a long time coming, but I've been changing my production setup around a bit lately and getting it more efficient. So hopefully now, I should be able to keep up with my goal of two videos a week, one technique lesson and one song lesson every week for you guys. So hopefully this is just the first of many to come. So there's really only a few things we need to know about the left hand technique. Uh, but so much of our tone and speed comes from the way we play the notes with our left hand. So whether you've been playing for years or you're just starting out, I'm sure you're going to find some useful tips in this video. So first of all, the first thing you need to know is when you place your finger down on a string to play a note, you must be aiming to place your finger just behind the front edge of the fret line. Not in the middle or the back of the fret or on top of the fret lines. If you're in the back of the fret or on the fret line, it's gonna have that nasty buzz to it. The middle is okay, but the middle is very close to landing in the back of the fret. Whereas if you land in the front edge, it requires the least amount of pressure to get a good sounding note, and you're further away from accidentally landing in the back of the fret. So aim for that front edge, and then if you're in the right spot, but you're still getting that buzz, that nasty buzz on your note, that just means you're not pressing down hard enough. So press a bit harder and it should be sounding excellent. So that's the first step. Next up we want to get the left wrist and elbow as straight in line as possible while we're playing. So what I want you to do is this, hang your elbow, left elbow down at your side where it naturally kind of fall from your shoulder. Then raise your hand up to where it naturally reaches out to. Let's pretend for a moment that you're like a waiter holding a plate. A waiter is going to hold a plate out in front of them with the plate above your elbow reaching up and out forwards to your plate. If the waiter was to lower it down below their elbow, their fingers are going to come together and they're going to lose balance. Or if they move it too far back towards their body, again, their fingers are going to get too close together and they're going to lose the plate and probably lose their job when they lose all the drinks off the top. So, what you want to do is reach that out forward and spread those fingers nice and wide. So now that you're holding your imaginary plate out in front of you, I want you to just move the neck of the bass to where your hand is. Don't try to move your arm back or move your hand forward to your bass. Leave it exactly where it is and lie your bass neck in your hand position. What I find is that depending on how long your forearm is, when you're in this middle section here between about the 5th and the 8th fret of the bass, that you should end up on about a 45 degree angle with the neck compared to your shoulders. So the neck of my bass right now is heading out over top of my left knee. So what we do now is as you want to move up and down the neck, instead of trying to adjust the, the angle of your wrist to fit the angle of the neck, what we do is we leave our arm in that position and we swing it and pivot it from your elbow so that everything stays in line. So that means that the neck angle has to come flatter to about a 30 degree angle when you're playing right at the end. And as I go up to the top of the bass or all the way down here, I'm going to end up on about an 80 degree angle right out playing off the side of my hip when I want to do soloing up high. But that keeps my left elbow and wrist nice and straight all the time. So it feels the same as opposed to getting side on like this and getting that nasty bend in your wrist when you get up high. The third thing to know about your left hand technique is your finger positions. Now if you're just starting out on the bass, you're probably only ready to play songs with like one or two fingers. But you just need to know that the eventual goal is to be able to achieve playing finger per fret, which means four fingers across four frets. So one finger per fret across four frets. Uh, there are other fingerings as well, like the Samandal style fingering of one, two, four across three frets. But we'll get onto that at another lesson. Today we're going to talk about how we can achieve that finger per fret positioning. So to achieve the finger per fret position, what you're going to need to do is keep this hand in a nice low position with your palms sort of underneath the neck of the bass. Don't let it touch up against the bottom of the neck. Then make sure the thumb on the back is also nice and low. Don't let it wrap up the top and bunch the fingers together. It's got to stay down nice and low 
and it needs to be between your second and third finger, nice and central, so that it's offering the same level of um, actual mechanical support to all the other fingers equally, as opposed to bunching up beside the first finger and making that finger really strong and all the other ones really weak. So keep that nice and centered between there, and then your first and fourth finger should have this nice V shape going on, with the other two fingers tucked down in between. If we go back to that waiter tip again, you'll notice that when you hold a plate up with your fingers, your first and fourth finger make that same V shape and that your thumb is directly centered between the fingers. If your fingers are off to the side and your thumb is out to the other side, you're going to lose the plate straight away. So what we're going to do is hold your plate up like that, take your plate away, hold, keep holding your hand as it was and place your base in between just like we did before. But now tuck your fingers down, first and fourth finger go down first, and the other two bend around so that they don't reach up too high and they still play on their fingertips. That's the most ideal way to achieve that finger perforate stretch. Okay, so one last thing we need to know about the left hand before we finish up, and that is the left hand has one other very important job to do other than just playing the notes, and that is it must always be muting all the strings below the one you're currently playing. So if I was to be playing an open E string, my left hand fingers are lying on the A, D and G, muting them while I'm playing my E. If I wasn't to do that and just played E's, you would hear those harmonics come out afterwards and the rumble of the other strings. That is going to make your tone sound really average and poor and just make everything sound really messy. So make sure that your left hand fingers are always muting below the string you're playing or when you're actually fretting a note that your fingers are lying down flat enough that they're actually touching the strings below. Don't keep your fingers too curled up, leaving them open underneath. For example, if we were to play something like Seven Nation Army with open strings, if I didn't do that correctly, I'm gonna end up with this sound. Which doesn't sound very good. You gotta make sure that when you bring that finger down, it's gonna to be touching the string below the one that you just played, and that's how you mute that open string. So, it should sound like that, nice and clear, and only hearing the notes that you want to hear played. Okay, so that's it. Now, just to recap, here are the four things we talked about today. Firstly, always put your finger at the front edge of the fret, just behind the fret line. Secondly, keep your elbow and wrist in a nice straight line all the time. Then adjust the neck of your bass to suit your hand, don't adjust your wrist angle to suit your bass. Thirdly, try to achieve a finger per fret stretch when you're playing and get that nice V shape between fingers one and four. Always make sure that your left hand is muting the strings below the one you're currently playing. Okay, so that's it. Now, if you've watched all three parts of this series, you should now have a perfect setup and technique right across the whole base. And you should be ready to move on to the next step. So if you want to have a go at trying to learn Seven Nation Army and practice muting the strings like I did just before, click here or click over here if you want to have a go at playing Finger Per Fret on Feel Good Ink by The Gorillas. Then hit the subscribe button here if you haven't already and let me know in the comment section if you guys have any technique questions you want me to answer on my next episode. But that's all for this week guys, so until next time go play, practice and play some more.